Uh, okay, so now we want to talk about the world's most famous uh, Bystel cipher, the Data Encryption Standard, or DES, as it's universally known. Uh, this is a, a, a U.S. government standard. It was a standard, you know, for like 30 years or more than uh, 25 years or more, probably 30 years, roughly 30 years. Okay, so it was a U.S. government standard for a long, uh, maybe 25 years. Okay, for a long period of. Uh, time from the mid 70s till about 2000 or so. Okay, so, and, and really the development of DES is one of those sort of watershed events in the history of cryptography. It wasn't really intended to be that way, but it just turned out that that's, what, you know, that's the way things worked out. Okay, so the cipher itself uh, is based on a design uh, that was developed at IBM. Okay, and their, their algorithm was called Lucifer. And one of the people who was working on the Lucifer algorithm in their crypto group there was named Bystel. Okay, so it's a Bystel cipher. It uses that sort of principle. Um, okay, the development of this thing was kind of controversial. Okay, so here, here's what happened. The National Bureau of Standards they put out a, a request and they said, hey, you know, send us your crypto algorithms because we're going to create this government standard uh, crypto algorithm and if yours is selected, you're going to be a world famous cryptographer. Okay, you know, so how many proposals do you suppose they got? I mean, doesn't everybody want to be a world famous cryptographer? Well, at the time, I mean, they literally got, you know, a very small number you know, like a handful of <coughs> legitimate applications. And the reason was, at the time, nobody was doing cryptography except for people in government and military, and they weren't applying, right? Okay. So, you know, they got a very small number of applications. Of those, they looked at most of them, and they said, these are just garbage, you know. They, they, these people obviously don't know what they're doing, and they got it down to essentially one feasible-looking candidate, and that was the algorithm from uh, IBM. And this is the way the government works, okay? Having worked for the government a long time, I know how things work in the government. Okay, so the National Bureau of Standards, they put out this request, you know, send us your crypto algorithms and we're gonna pick one, it's gonna be a government standard. And they get all these algorithms and they do like a cursory, you know, look at them and they can say, oh, these are bad, these are terrible. And then they look at this one and it looks kind of legitimate. But then, after the fact, after they've done all this, they realize, they sit around and scratch their head and they say, hey, you know, we don't really have any expertise here to decide whether this is a good algorithm or not. So where do they turn? They turn to the only people in the government who really have the expertise to analyze crypto algorithms, and that's the National Security Agency. So they go to NSA and they say, hey, will you analyze this algorithm for us and tell us whether it's any good? And NSA says, forget it. <laughs> We're a super secret agency. We don't do stuff like that. And NBS, they go to their Congress people, you know, and say, hey, you know, you're spending all this money on NSA and they won't even help us to develop this algorithm. So they put pressure, government, you know, officials put pressure on NSA and they were dragged, literally kicking and screaming into analyzing this particular algorithm. Yes, that's the, that's, that's the true story. Okay, but NSA said, okay, we'll look at it for you, but don't tell anybody. Okay, and that was probably <coughs> NSA right there because they did make some changes to the algorithm. Cut, one change was pretty obvious. They changed the key size from 128 bits to 56 bits. That's a pretty big change. Okay, then they went inside the algorithm and they tinkered around. They made a few very subtle changes to the internal workings of the algorithm. And what happened was, you know, from the public's perspective, here's what happened. This algorithm went to the National Bureau of Standards. Anybody could look and see what Lucifer looked like. A different algorithm came out, which looked similar but had these changes to it, and NBS didn't tell them why. You know, it gave them no reason why they made these changes. So people were very suspicious that something funny had gone on here, right? So eventually, you know, this being the United States, you can't keep a secret, right? So eventually it came out that NSA was involved. Well, then what did people think? If, I, if NSA had set up so that they could read any message. That's right. I mean, people, you know, NSA does design crypto algorithms for the government and military. That's one of the things they do. But they also try to break algorithms, right, and break uh, crypto systems. So the suspicion was that NSA had put a back door in it so that they could read messages encrypted easily and nobody else could. 
So what the ultimate, and there were like, you know, you know, Senate held hearings, you know, and there were public hearings and everything on NSA's involvement in the design of this algorithm. And it was a big, it was a big brouhaha sort of thing. But the upshot, the final uh, result was, it stirred up a tremendous amount of interest in cryptography because here you had an algorithm that NSA was certifying as being secure, and they're the people who know about cryptography. So what is it that makes this secure, or is there a back door, right? So a tremendous amount of research was kicked off unintentionally by this process. Yeah. Is there any evidence? Excuse me. Is there been any? Anything public that looks like evidence as to whether the NSA actually did or did not? Yeah, we'll get to that. Okay, okay. hold on. Here. Okay, so okay, so just keep that in mind. That's that's kind of how this thing came came about. All right. Um, okay. Okay, so DES itself. Okay, DES, as I mentioned, is a Feistel cipher. You know, the numbers that go with DES, it's a 64-bit block size, right? So you encrypt a 64-bit chunk of bits. You get out as ciphertext a 64-bit chunk of bits. The key is 56 bits. Okay, now the key in a block cipher, you can think of as change the key, you get a new code book. Okay, so in DES, how many code books do we have available? Two to the fifty-six. That's a large number of possible different possible code books that we can use. Okay, there's sixteen rounds, and each round we're going to we're going to use forty-eight of the fifty-six bits of key uh, per round. Now, you won't believe this when I show you the next slide, but it is actually true that each round of this is pretty simple for a block cipher. Okay, and you see the wiring diagram. You know, don't. You know, don't have your head explode. You just hold on. It's not as bad as it looks. The security and the subtle changes, actually, that NSA made comes in the form of these uh, so-called S-boxes, or substitution boxes, which are really just lookup tables. Okay, they're lookup tables that take as input six bits and as output four bits. And there's eight of these guys that are specified in DES. Okay, so, so we'll look at one of those uh, in just a minute here. Uh, okay, so there you go. This is one round of DES. How many rounds are there? 16 of these rounds take place. Okay, so that looks pretty bad. Okay. Uh, these numbers here tell you the number of bits that travel on that particular wire. Um, we have a left half, we have a right half. All this stuff over here is just generating the 48 bits of key that we're going to use out of those 56 bits of key. Okay, so we don't really care. We're not going to pay too much attention to this part. Okay, there is an algorithm for producing the sub, so-called subkey. You know, the 48 bits we use. We'll just assume. You know, we're not so concerned about that. Okay, so already we've cut it in half, right? We're not going to worry about this part. We're just going to worry about this part. Okay, now it's a Feistel cipher. I said, or I claimed. So, is it really? Looks like a horrible wiring diagram. How could this possibly be a Feistel cipher? Okay, well, what happens in a Feistel cipher? The new left half is? The old right half. The new left half is, in fact, the old right half. Okay, that's all that happens. It just gets copied down. Okay, the new right half is equal to what? Well, it's the old left half, XOR, with a function of the old right half and the key. Okay? So there you go. There is your round function. Everything else just falls out by the definition of a Feistel cipher. Okay, so now if we can specify this guy, this guy, and this guy, we can specify the round function. Okay? Now, it's kind of weird. We start out, you know, with the right half being 32 bits. We expand it out to 48 bits so that we can do this XOR subkey. And then we go through these S boxes. Okay, these S boxes are again are just lookup tables that take in six bits and spit out four, but we've got eight of them. So eight times six is? 48, so we start with 48. Eight times uh, four is 32, so we end up with 32. So that's how we squish it back down to 30, 32 bits. And then we have a permutation here. Now, these are really just permutations, these two guys. Okay, They're not really all that interesting. The interesting part turns out to be the S-box thing here. <coughs> 
Um, okay, so here's the so-called expansion permutation. Just for the record, I put it up here. Um, so suppose you take the 32 bits that come in, you know, the, the right half side, okay, in the picture, and number those bits 0 through 31. These are the bits that come out, okay? So it's really just permuting the bits around, shuffling them around, and putting 16 of them in there twice so that you get 48. <laughs> That's really all that's going on. Okay, again, this is part of the algorithm. You don't get to choose this, right? Somebody specified it, you want to implement DES, this is what you have to do, right? Okay, then we go down through that thing, we expand it out, we <coughs> XOR the sub key, now we're down to the interesting part, the uh, S boxes. Okay, again, there's eight of these guys, eight of these S boxes, each of them's just a lookup table, all right? Uh, and here's one of them. Um, so suppose you have six bits coming in, number them zero through five, left to right. Okay, you take the first and last bit, treat it as an index to the row. Take the middle four bits, treat it as an index to the column, just go to the place where those guys meet and pull out the four bits that show up there. It's just a lookup, right? It's a table lookup. So suppose your bits that go in are all zeros. Keep it simple. You take the first and last guy, that gives you a zero, zero as the index to the row. Take the middle four, zero, zero, zero. That gives you the index to the column, that's what you pull out. That's the four bits that come out. Okay, six bits in, four bits out. And you got eight of these guys, so 48 bits coming in, 32 bits coming out. Okay, and these guys turn out to be, oh, I'll get to that Okay, so we've got the, uh, the uh, S box. Um, okay, now look at, uh, Let's say, let's say the last row here in this S box. Can you see any special property of those bits that show up in that last row of the S box? Well, it, it's probably easier if I list it in hex, okay, than having them all sitting there as bits. But how many elements are here in this row? There's 16. Okay, how many times does 0000, zero, zero, zero show up? How many times does 0001 zero, 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 show up? And so on. It's a permutation, right? This is a permutation of 0 through 15, or 0 through f in hex. So is this row. So is this row. So is this row. In fact, that's true of every S box. So all together in the eight X box, X, S boxes, you've got 32 permutations of 0 through 15. That's the part where NSA went in and made some subtle changes. Okay, they changed the entries in the S box and didn't tell anybody why. <laughs> so people study these S boxes to death. Never in human history has so much effort gone into studying, you know, 32 permutations of 0 through 15. Yeah. Okay. Uh, finally, once you get through the S boxes, you've got 32 bits. You do a final permutation there. It's not too interesting. <coughs> there it is. Uh, sub key, how the sub key is generated, we're going to ignore that part, except maybe you 265 students might have the pleasure of looking at that a little bit. Uh, but it's not really that interesting. Okay, nothing too special there. Okay, so that's one round, right? That's just one round of deaths. Again, there's 16 rounds, and there's a couple other sort of bookkeeping things that go into the actual algorithm if you want to implement it. Um, there is an initial permutation that you have to do before round one, so the bits get shuffled around a little bit before you start. At the end, you take the left half and the right half and you swap those uh, guys. There's a final permutation that's the inverse of this guy, okay, that's there. None of these things serve any security purpose, and in fact, these two, as far as I can tell, nobody knows why they do these things. <laughs> They're just there. They're part of the algorithm. You have to do it if you want to implement DES. This one actually serves a purpose, not an actual security purpose, but it does have a purpose. I don't want to tell you what it is. You can think about it because it might be a homework problem. Okay?